Section 7.5, Strategy for Integration. Let's take a look at a couple problems and see if we could find a good strategy to integrate each of the uh, functions given. We probably won't actually go and solve most of these, but we'll at least uh, explore options that would lead to solutions. So let's uh, take a look at the integral of tangent cubed over cosine cubed. So we could rewrite that as the integral of tangent cubed times secant cubed. And then, as we've seen previously, we have an odd power of tangent. So we can pull out a tangent and a secant to get tangent squared, secant squared, times secant tangent. That enables us to write the entire thing in terms of secant, except for the secant tangent dx, which will end up being uh, du. So we use the identity secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. We keep our secant squared. We keep our secant tangent. And then you could just do a substitution at this point, and you would arrive at the solution. Let's look at an alternative method. If you really, you know, like sine and cosine so much better than tangent and uh, secant, then you could take the uh, tangent cubed over cosine cubed and rewrite it as sine cubed over cosine cubed times 1 over cosine cubed. And at this point, you could combine the cosine cubes to get sine cubed over cosine to the 6. And then we have an odd power of sine, so we could take out one of those sines and just leave uh, sine squared on top, which becomes 1 minus cosine squared. Keep cosine to the 6 and keep the sine we took out. So then, just like before, how the secant tangent became du when you do your substitution, the sine would become du, so we should let u equal cosine. So we get 1 minus u squared over u to the 6 times minus du. Because if u is cosine, du is uh, minus sine dx you end up with u squared minus 1 over u to the 6. And then, you because you just take the negative and switch the order. And then you uh, get u to the minus 4th minus u to the minus 6, if you just want to write it as power functions, and so that you can do the antiderivative fairly easily, and then go and substitute back in for u. When you have a uh, square root inside of an integral, you usually want to either rationalize the square root, do a substitution where u is equal to the square root, and that way you can get rid of it, or you want to do a trig substitution if you happen to have a square root of one of the forms we discussed. So in this case, it's not an obvious trig substitution. It's not in a fraction anywhere you want to try to multiply this thing by. So how about we let u equals square root of x. Then first let's write what x equals because it'll be easier to find dx that way. So we square both sides to get rid of the square root and we get that dx is 2u du. So that means that the integral e to the square root x dx is equal to 2 times the integral of u e to the u du. And at this point you have the integral of a product so you could do this by integration by parts. If you let u equal, well, u for the u dv, then when you take the derivative, it'll disappear. And e to the u is easy to take the antiderivative, so you should let that equal dv. OK, in this problem, 
there's nothing really obvious for us to substitute, and it's a rational function. So our first rule for looking at rational functions of this type is to do some division when we have a numerator that has a degree greater than or equal to the degree of our denominator. So let's take a look at x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x into x to the fifth plus 0x to the fourth plus 0x to the third plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1, which is our numerator. So first we divide x to the fifth divided by x cubed is x squared. We get x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth minus 10x cubed when we uh, multiply by x squared, this guy. So then we subtract and we end up with x to the fifth minus x to the fifth cancels. We get uh, 3x to the fourth because minus minus is plus and we get plus 10x cubed. So then we do the same thing again. We divide and we get 3x, 3x to the fourth divided by x cubed is 3x. We multiply and we get 3x to the fourth minus 9x cubed minus 30x squared. So then we subtract and we get uh, 19x cubed plus 30x squared. So then again, divide, we get 19. Multiply, we get 19x cubed minus 57x squared minus 190 times x. And we end up with 87x squared plus 190x and we bring down our one. So it looks like x to the fifth plus one divided by x to the third minus three x squared minus 10 x is equal to x squared plus three x plus 19 from here plus 87x squared plus 190x plus 1, which is our remainder over our quotient, which is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x. So our next step after doing our division is to try to factor our denominator. So let's take a look at x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x. There is a greatest common factor of x, so we pull that out and we get x squared plus 3x plus 19. Sorry, x squared. I was reading off my uh, previous thing over there. x squared minus 3x minus 10, which is x times x minus 5 times x plus 2. So this means we can rewrite 87x squared plus 190x plus 1 over x times x minus 5 times x plus 2 as the partial fractions a over x plus b over x minus 5 plus c over x plus 2. So we would integrate th these three terms separately. Then we would replace this part of our integral with these three terms. Each of these is just, you know, power functions, so those are easy to integrate. And each of these is just going to be a natural log times uh, some constant a, b, c that we figure out.
Okay, in this case, there's a fairly obvious substitution here. Look at natural log. Its derivative is sitting right next to it, 1 over x. So we can let u equal ln x, du is equal to dx over x, and then our integral becomes dx over x radical ln x, and it's just 1 over, oops, integral of 1 over rad u. So you just write that as a power function, u to the minus 1 half, and then you go and add 1, divide by uh, half. Okay, for this one, it's slightly less obvious because we still have a square root, and we could do a substitution where u is equal to the entire square root, but it becomes pretty messy. You can tell just by looking at it, it's not going to be too pleasant. However, in this case, it makes sense to just try to do some algebraic manipulation first. We've got this messy square root 1 minus x over 1 plus x. So let's try rationalizing it by multiplying by the square root of 1 minus x. So then we get no more square root on the top. And on the bottom we get the square root of 1 minus x squared. So then we can split that into two different integrals of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared and the, the square root of, well, x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And in this case, our method was so efficient that we can easily just finish it. We get sine inverse of x for 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared because the derivative of sine inverse is that. And for our other one, it's an easy substitution you let u equal 1 minus x squared, and then you have an x dx right over there. So you end up with the square root of 1 minus x squared because the uh, 2 cancels with the half, and of course a plus c.